Good afternoon. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Claims Committee for today, April 28th. I've been joined by Council Member Quincy, the Chair of the Ways and Means Committee, and Council Member Reich, the Chair of the Transportation and Public Works Committee. We do not yet have quorum, and so out of respect for the people in the audience, I just want to let you know we turn the cameras on, we're ready to go, and we're awaiting quorum. And as soon as we have one more member of the committee, we will begin our proceedings. So thank you for your patience. We've been joined by Council Member Gordon, the Chair of the Health, Energy, and Environment Committee, and that uh, gives us a quorum um, of members of the Council on the Committee. Uh, I will welcome you here today and let you know a little bit about our process. Um, the way that this will work is our uh, City Attorney, Tim Scarda, will give an, a briefing of the case. Everyone has received a packet on the Committee. We have uh, the information is given to us by staff. Uh, Mr. Scarda will present the city's point of view. Uh, we'd invite claimants to come up and tell us their point of view. It's important for you to tell us why the city was negligent. That is the standard that we're looking at, how the city was wrong. You need to prove that we were wrong. Uh, if you should not win within this process, you are certainly able to go to a legal process, um, which is court, and uh, our staff can uh, direct you as to how to follow up with that. So we'll start with item number one. Um, this is the case of Amy Bahadim. Uh, Mr. Scarda. Madam Chair, members of the committee, this is a claim with a date of loss of October 3rd, 2014, regarding a closed vehicle from the month of Montgomery County in Lake Valley. The claimant is making a claim for reimbursement of his tow charge. She had her car parked at 904 36th Street West and says that she did not see any signage regarding parking restrictions. Uh, the uh, information submitted to the staff claims committee indicated that the citation was issued at 10.28 p.m. on October 3rd, 2014, and that temporary no parking signs were posted. To the claims staff committee, the plaintiff submitted, si uh, submitted some photographs of her car at the scene and one of the photographs contained in the claims packet does show a, does. I think you're talking about the address. Ma'am, we're yeah. in the middle of a public hearing. We've started the public process. If you are the applicant, please come into the room. Yes, please yeah. come into the room. That's the wrong building on the third floor. I found the city that on the building. Okay, well, you might want to have a seat. Let Mr. Scarda complete his case and we'll call on you. The, the date of loss is October 3rd, 2014 for towing in the amount of $138. The claimant indicated that she did not see any signage. She presented pictures to the staff committee and one of the pictures does in fact show a, uh, a uh, stake where there is no sign attached, but the photo also shows a, a uh, sign in the uh, distance across an alleyway. And based upon the information submitted and the testimony, the staff claims committee recommended denial of this claim. Okay, Mr. Scarda, is the automobile in the photo the appellant's automobile? I do not recall whether she photographed her vehicle or that's just a vehicle that was at the scene at the time. Okay. Um, Ma'am, would you like to please come forward, state your name and address for the record, as you might have missed when the meeting began. Um, you need to prove the city negligent. The, how, the onus is on you to explain how the city was negligent. So if you could okay. step forward and uh, state your name and address for the record and make your case, and then we'll hear from traffic control. Okay. Uh, my name is Amy Behouden, 2295 Doswell, St. Paul. So just start out. Um, I guess I was surprised that I'm back again because I already took a half a day off work, but I guess that's just who I am. I'm trying to just fight the good fight here, but um, I did even have someone comment, and I specifically remember what he looked like in the last meeting, and he did say there's no law against parking next to a stick, and I thought he was basically telling me that, you know, don't worry, wait the 10 days and you'll hear good news from us, but I didn't. I was surprised, and that's why I'm back. Um, I also made a copy. I did five by seven so you could see it better. And I think they're valuable pictures for you to take a look at. Why don't you go ahead and put your picture on the screen right okay. next to you? 
right we have a similar side. picture but on the other side here okay yep so that's the picture we have that shows the sign in the picture okay and then here's another picture because i wasn't parked next to that stick on the left i was parked further back here see that big distance between and it's uptown so i mean a stick could mean it's a garage sale a band playing whatever so but i didn't even see the stick because i was parked back here behind two other cars on the corner here and so i went to thought twice the sign that's actually posted is way down here past an alleyway about probably 50 to 70 feet away so there's really no way for me to see that especially when i parked during rush hour um, I did when I, in fact, I'm jumping ahead, but um, when I went to get my car that day, I did have a gentleman from Calhoun Pet Supply, who I believe to be the owner, and I wrote down his name as a witness. He ran outside and said, oh, no, are you one of the people whose car got towed away this morning? I tried to find everybody. I went to coffee shops to tell everybody not to park there because when I came into work at 11 a.m., the signs were blown down because if you check the weather report, which I've already done, on October 2nd, it was a very blustery, wet, windy day. That's why there's still even water on the curb there. Um, so he believed that the sign just blew off. So he was trying to be a good Samaritan to let everyone know. I said, yeah, it was me. Well, while I was talking to him, I pulled over Dan, who was a, a patrol officer. And he said, yeah, you're right. There's no sign, but there's nothing I can do but tell you what to do and what the procedure is. And he was very helpful and gave me his business card, which I also provided when I sent things in the mail. Um, while I was talking to the pet shop owner, this car pulled up right here. Her name was Ann, a nice lady, probably in her late 60s, early 70s. And we said, don't park there. Oh, well, why? <coughs> well, that stick, actually, I just got towed. And she said, well, that's not right. I'll give you a ride to the impound lot. I know where it is. I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I kind of made a new friend. She even texted me and said, you know, let me know if you need anything. So I provided her phone number as well as the pet shop owner's. And I just felt like there was no way. I'm very, very alert and very responsible. I'm a defensive driver. I always look for signs. Sometimes even pay more than I should just to make sure that I have enough parking. Kind of a type A person when it comes to parking, you know? So I also provided other photos that are somewhere we when I them sent up. them in. And I don't know if it's just because it's harder to see because we're not zooming in. But when I looked at my desktop computer, I really noticed that sign way down there. and and. The officer on the ticket said that it was marked, and it, and it wasn't marked. And the signs were posted 24 hours prior to um, on the 2nd at 10 a.m. So the weather report is, is obvious that it wasn't just a young kid in Uptown tearing the sign off. I believe strongly, like the pet shop owner, that it was probably due to weather conditions. So I, I called in, too, and I remember talking to someone. I thought his name was Greg Miller, but I'm not sure if that rings a bell. Miller, someone Miller, maybe Jason. and. I was surprised that his reaction was, well, they're probably sweeping the streets and you didn't see the sign. And I said, no, actually they weren't sweeping the streets, it was utility work. Because I have another picture on my phone that shows a big utility work sign. I parked at the very beginning of the utility work at the very end of the block. The stick was 20 feet away. The next sign was you know, 50 to 70 feet away. I mean, I didn't measure it, but I'm just guesstimating. So really, how would there be any reason for me to know and then in addition to that, I also went to pick up my car a little bit later than the other two that were towed. The other two had already been there. And the person working there, his name was Frank. He looked like he's probably going to retire there, and he's been there forever. Real nice guy. And he said, you know, um, you're the third person to pick up your car that said that there was no sign on West 36th Street. And I said, yeah, I think that's where it is, Brian, 36th. Uh, and he said, since you're the only one that hasn't yelled at me, I'm going to write down my name and my phone number and give you my card and write down the other citation numbers, hoping that that would help me. And, you know, I just don't know what else I can do. I've taken two half days off of work because I'm just stubborn about it. But I just feel like, you know, it's unfair. But and the standard is negligence. So you need yeah. to tell me how the city was negligent. Um, well, the city was negligent in that they didn't re-sign it. Right? I mean, there should be a sign there. So how, as a citizen, when I keep getting these letters saying the city's not negligent, he gave me a ticket, didn't notice that the sign wasn't there. Well, I think that someone from traffic control will be here today. Yeah. They, they, they have to see the sign themselves. And then I said, you know, initially when I called in, if there is any way that you had pictures of it and could prove it, then I'm fine with it. But there's absolutely no way you could because I know for a fact there was no sign there. Okay. So I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know what negligence means. Maybe it means that I'm just hitting a dead end here, but I think I have more than enough information. 
what is the definition of negligence? Like, what do I have to prove? Negligence sounds like they did something nasty, but I'm not saying wrong. that. Right, that the city ticketed you wrongly. Wrongly. Well, yeah, that that's exactly what happened to the three of us. And maybe he didn't realize that there wasn't a sign there because it's a very, very busy, congested area. I'm not saying that he did something horribly wrong. He just overlooked the fact that that sign was not on there. Okay. Is that your testimony? So, yeah. I mean, I could probably go on and on, but I think you get the gist of it. So, and there's other people here. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Are there any questions uh, for Ms. Can you pronounce your name for me? Bahoudin. Bahoudin. Nope. Okay, thank you. We'll ask if someone from traffic control is here. Do you want these up here yet? Sure. We have them in our packet too. Okay. And then do I find out today or is it a You're going to find out right now. Okay. And your remedy, should you not be successful here today, is to go to court. Okay. Mr. Miller. Madam Chair, Council Members, I'm speaking on behalf of an agent that is no longer working at traffic control. He transferred to another city department. On uh, October 3rd, Agent responded to a complaint of temporary no parking on the 900 block of West 36th. Uh, you see this photo, this was provided by the claimant. That was actually provided by me, right? Is that the yep, you're part? the claimant. Yep. Okay. Yep. You might, you might want to sit down. You can oh, just sit in the first chair. Okay. Right there. I'm going to. Madam Chair, I'm posting a temporary no parking notice that Public Works puts out and sends to us. On this notice, it indicates that on 10-1, uh, they posted that block of West 36th Street for temporary no parking. When the agent arrived at approximately 10:30 in that area, there were three vehicles that were parked where temporary no signs were temporary no parking signs were posted. The green highlighted one is the claimant's vehicle. And on the citation, the agent noted under the officer comments that there was no permit visible. The signs were posted on October 1st at 10.30. He observed two signs. Uh, our standard in traffic control is that two signs have to be posted and the agents have to physically look at each sign to make sure that the information on the sign pertains to that day that they're tagging and that there has to be a minimum of two signs posted on each block that we enforce. Okay. So ma'am, ma'am, oh, you, your time has passed. Oh, okay. I just had a question. Okay, you're going to have to ask them afterwards, please. Okay. Mr. Miller. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? I'm sorry, I'm just paging back and forth here. I do not have anything else, unless you have any questions. Are there any questions for staff with regard to this situation? Councilmember Gordon. Would you, Mr. Councilmember Gordon, could you turn on your microphone? I can't do it from here. This is just generally about the guideline two signs. Is that two signs on each side of the street or just two signs anywhere on the block that you could see? Madam Chair, Council Member Gordon, it, our standard is that the two, that a minimum of two signs has to be posted on each side of the block, I guess would be the best way. So if there was restricted parking across the street, that would also have to have two signs. Uh, Ms. Bohaden was ticketed on the even side of the street so there, if there was vehicles on the odd side, we would have to count those signs for that side only. Okay, and it's obvious from the photo that there's at least one sign, and then it looks like a stick from where one sign maybe blew down or was torn off. That's correct. I but was not the ticketing agent, but when the agent was there at uh, 1028, he physically had to count a minimum of two signs and he verified that the signs were no parking for the day that the enforcement happened. Okay, so he, he saw two signs. That's correct, yes. Thank are, you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Miller? Ms. Bohaden, would you like to come up and say anything additional? Please step forward. Um, I'm not sure where the block 
starts and ends. Maybe there's that alley between, so it's still considered 36th Street, but there's only one side on my side of the street. And it was way past the alley, way far away. So I feel bad for the other two people. I'm sure they probably didn't come down here twice like I did, but you know, I'm not gonna look across the street on 36 and Bryant to see if there's another sign. And they just started. So now I also heard they were posted on October 1st, which means they were actually up for two days. And I even have a photo in my phone of the sign that's all rumpled up and wet, lying in a ball. I haven't presented that yet, because you know, I already spent probably $15 on photos. Um, but I could do that as well if you'd like to see that somehow. Um, we believe you, but yeah. the truth of the matter is the officer needs to see two signs. And, and it's unfortunate that he transferred to a different department and he's not here. So there's someone speaking for him. Um, but if it, this is the person that I spoke with on the phone, he basically tried to talk me out of even coming down. That's why I mentioned him earlier. And he started off by saying it was probably street sweeping and it wasn't. And then he said, well, if you come down, I'll be there. And I just thought that was kind of strange too. Like, in other words, I already think that we're not negligent. So, you know, it's a sad situation. It's not the end of the world, but I, unless someone can prove to me that there was another sign with a photograph instead of just highlighting a citation, um, you know, I just feel like I'm innocent and that the city's negligent for not really checking for two signs and maybe thought there was one. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Okay, thank you. Mr. Scarters, anything you'd like to add? Uh, Madam Chair, no, nothing okay. additional. Um, members of the council, Council Member Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I um, uh, do not see that the city would be negligent, so I'm going to move for denial of the claim. Are there other comments, questions anyone would like to raise? Seeing none, all in favor of Council Member Quincy's motion, signify by saying aye. Uh, <clears throat> Any opposed? The, uh, you can take your issue to court, and that's the process where you'd bring people in. Amy, thank you for your testimony. We're not yes, going to argue with you in committee here today. We'll move on to item number two, Mr. Scarda. Mr. Claymore's claim, please. It, it, is Mr. Claymore here? Uh, I'm sorry. Ma yes, I, yeah. I guess he is. Madam Chair, members of the committee, Robert Claymore is bringing a claim for a date of loss of September 5, 2014 in the amount of $2,472 related to a stop box, uh, the repla replacement of a stock stop box. Mr. Claymore purchased a home on March 12, 2014. The city was unable to turn the water on at the curb and the complainant had to repair the stop box in the amount of $2,472. He alleges that the city damaged the stop box uh, during prior water shutoffs. This stop box was originally installed on December 7, 2011. Since that installation, the city shut off the prior owner's water service on May 12, 2013, and again on September 24, 2013. Uh, the city attempted to turn the water on prior to Mr. Uh, Claymore's purchase of the property on February 7, 2014, February 10, 2014, and February 12, 2014, and were unable to turn the water on at that time. Subsequently, on, on uh, Mr. Claymore purchased the uh, water, or purchased the home, the city was again unable to turn on the water, and he alleges that the city had damaged the stop box uh, sometime in the past, make, requiring the uh, the repairs in the amount sought by the claimant. The, the uh, staff claims committee heard the testimony and uh, recommended uh, denial of the claim. Okay, are there any questions for Mr. Scarda with regard to issue number two? We're pretty familiar with the stop box issues. Questions? Seeing none, we'll ask Mr. Claymore to come up and explain why you bought the house knowing the water couldn't be turned on and that the city's negligent. Well. I didn't know that the water couldn't be turned on from the information I received from the city. I, I guess I got to say who I am. Robert Absolutely. Claymore um, owned property or my home's at 3247 2nd Street North in Minneapolis. And I guess I hadn't heard what he said before where it, it had been turned off twice before. The information I received was turned off one time before, but that's neither here nor there. But um, I kind of have a timeline. Like he said, the 
stop box was replaced. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what a oh, stop yes. box is. Oh, yes. We know is. a lot okay. about You hear a lot about that? Okay. It was replaced in 2011. Um, there was an assessment that I had to pay that was came along with the property for $3,510 for the stop box that was put in in December of 2011. Um, the information <laughs> I got said it was turned off in September of 2013 due to a delinquent payment or something. And then uh, try to get it turned back on once I purchased the property again, or they try to turn it on. Prior to that, I called the um, water department. They sent uh, people out on several occasions um, to try to turn the, prop turn the uh, stop box back on. They were unsuccessful. I have a note here. Um, it says the meter shop came out on February 7th, 2014, could not turn it on. Another meter shop tech went to the property on 2-10-2014, could not turn the water on. And uh, a technician from the east side yard attempted two more times on the 12th and could not turn the water on. And they said they could not catch, could not catch the top of the valve with their tool. Um, If I jump around too much, I'm very nervous, but I hope I don't. Um, so they came back numerous times trying to get it turned on, said they couldn't get it turned on. Um, so they gave me some names of some plumbers to call, and I did that. I think I got response back from two plumbers that would come out and actually do it, but they couldn't get it done until, this was back in March, I think. They couldn't get it done until... When did I get it done? September 5th was when they came out and finally repaired it. So I was unable to live in the house till, or even, you know, no water, you can't do anything with it, right? Um, so I got the permit, had it repaired by Metro General Services, who was the company that originally replaced the stop box. Mm -hmm. um, they charged $2,400. So my claim is $72 higher than it should have been because initially they said they'd charge me $72 because I had to use a credit card to mm -hmm. uh, pay it and they didn't charge me that $72. But so they repaired it on September uh, 5th, I think it was, or 8th, I'm gonna see. September 5th is when the inspector came out, so it was that day. Um, the inspector's name was Ron Matros from the city, um, he watched as they were down there digging and stuff. I have pictures, but I have them on my computer. I'm not technologically. I, I'm just gonna enough. try to help you. Okay. Why is the city negligent in this? Well, this was a fifth. The valve was- property had been turned on, had been turned yep. off, had been turned on and been turned off. You have bought the property, it's your problem. How is it that the city is negligent? Do you have was, some sort it was, of proof It was turned of off twice. The, the valve was turned off twice. So it had to be turned on at least once or two times too then, right? So the very first time it was turned on, turned off, turned on, turned back off. So the valve rotated a total four times, brand new valve. Um, my, my thought is, is that here is the old valve here. And I can pass it up there if you guys want to look at it, see the force that it would take to, when this got turned off, what it would take to break this, this size of valve stem on a relatively new valve that's my that's my thought i guess you know somebody they came out with a special tool it says in their in their um they have a list of when they came out and what they did who did it whatever and i just think that to turn it that hard to break it because it got it obviously got broken when it was turned off at the bottom of the stop box, which was seven or eight feet underground, it was laying like this. Um, the inspector says, hold on to that valve, you have a good claim here. You know, but when I turned in this to the city claim form to, uh, was it Rico Johnson, mm -hmm. maybe Rico? He kind of didn't want to have anything to do with it. He wouldn't look at the valve. He, 
barely looked at the pictures I sent him, I think. Um, I gave him two people that were witnesses there. He didn't call either one of them. So I don't know why I even had to provide that. But um, that's my claim anyway, I guess, is I think somebody used excessive force. Here's one that's not broken that I have if anybody wants to look at that. But you know, I guess over excessive force when they shut this off is my claim. Okay. And Are there any questions for Mr. Claymore? Okay, thank you for your testimony. You can just sit back down and we'll see. Someone must be here from the water department, would be my yeah. guess. Who's here from the staff to speak to this issue? My name is please, please step forward and state your name and address for the record. I'm Adam Keir, council members. My name is Robert McBride. I represent the utility billing office. Um, I can address the actual shutoff attempt. We did um, send a turnoff notice to the owner of record at the time on uh, May 1st, saying that the water would be shut off on May 16th. Um, we did turn it off. The balance was $502.04 past due. The customer paid on May 20th, and we restored the service on uh, May 20th of 2013. Again, uh, the balance grew, and by September 2012, the balance was $583. We sent another shutoff notice to the owner of record. And the water was shut off on September 24th, 2013. Uh, by then, the ownership had changed. There was a sheriff sale in, in December of 2012. And in June of 2013, the ownership changed. So it was bank owned. The bank attempted to restore service in February, uh, like Mr. Claymore said, on about three or four separate occasions, and was unable to do so because the stop box was inoperable. And the bank knew that the stop box was the bank was told correct? five times prior to the closing and they asked prior to the closing how they could file a claim against the city it was their decision to sell the property mm -hmm. as is and i'm presuming it was the buyer's decision to buy it as is uh, that's just speculation okay are there any questions for staff on their testimony Okay, thank you uh, for explaining that. Is there anyone else here from the water department who wants to speak to this issue? Madam Chair, Council Members, I'm Karen Moselle. I'm a water service maintenance repair coordinator for the City of Minneapolis Water Department. And I am just here to say pretty much what Robert said as well, that we were out there for non-payment May 16th of 2013. And we did turn the water back on May 20th of 2013. And then we were out there again, September 4th, or excuse me, September. Um, September 24th of 2013, turned it off for non-payment again. And then we didn't return again till February of 2014. That's when we found that it is inoperable. Okay, are there any questions for staff? Thank you, uh, Mr. Claymore, do you have anything to add? I guess my big issue is, is I think that there was a successive force used on the valve, I guess what it comes down to where that would be the, not the city's negligence, but whoever was out there to do that, to do the, the shut off. Cause I, it was broke during the shut off, not the turn on because otherwise it would be stuck on. So that's my thought on it, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scarda, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, only to draw to the, uh, Madam Chair, to draw the, to the committee's attention that apparently uh, the damage was done while it was, if damage was done, it was while it was a bank owned property and uh, whether the bank had a claim for any damage done to it and whether though that was taken into account in the purchase price on the as is sale of whether there really is any loss on the part of Mr. Mr. Claymore for the uh, for the committee to consider is mm -hmm. did he in fact suffer any loss he paid to have it repaired but the bank was aware of it the problem and uh, mm -hmm. at the time of the as is sale of the bank property okay 
further questions for Mr. Scarda? Seeing none, Council Member <coughs> Johnson. Can I reply to you? I don't think so. That's our attorney, so we're not going to go back and forth with our attorney. With staff, you know. Yeah, well, no, he just said something that he wasn't quite ready to discuss. Council President Johnson. And then so I would move um, that recommendation to deny the claim. Uh, it's been moved to deny the claim. I, I also agree with the council president. I don't see how the city was negligent and the previous owner knew about this and didn't do anything. And I don't know how the city gets involved in accepting negligence for something that the bank knew was a problem and didn't take up at the time multiple times. On the motion to uh, approve, uh, the, on, on the motion to deny all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. You can certainly go to court, uh, which is the probably preferred process would be my guess. Um, item number three is going to be postponed one cycle at the request of the appellant, is that correct, the claimant? Yes, okay, so I'm gonna to move to postpone item number three and we'll move on to item number four, uh, which is Gregory Holmes. Is Mr. Holmes here? Is Mr. Holmes here? Last call for Mr. Holmes. Okay, I'm going to move to deny the claim of Mr. Holmes. Are there any objections to my motion given that Mr. Holmes is not here? Uh, seeing none, all in favor of denying the claim signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We'll move on to item number five, which is Mark Levinson. Is Mr. Levinson here? Mr. Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, this is listed under Mark Levinson, but we'll happily take your testimony as well. So we'll first ask Mr. Scarda for his uh, report. Madam Chair, members of the committee, and this was a claim with a date of loss of November 15th, 2014 uh, for damage to a vehicle in the amount of $2,906.67. And in front of the staff claims committee, there was extensive conversation about how the facts of this situation played out. So I will attempt to summarize them, but I think the presentation by the claimant and from the Department of Public Works will cast additional light on the situation. Uh, the claimant uh, filing a claim for damage to her vehicle on November 15th, 2014, a city of Minneapolis snow plow was working with full blinking lights uh, and a sign posted on the back of the vehicle, stay back 50 feet. The claimant pulled next to the city vehicle on the right side of the city vehicle and the, the plow and the claimant's vehicle were both stopped at a red light. The city driver started to make a right turn on red, which was prohibited to travel south on Central Avenue and struck the claimant's vehicle. And uh, after extensive testimony and discussion, the claims committee uh, recommended denial of this. Actually, we had recommended compromising the claim at a percentage of the uh, the claimed amount, I believe, uh, on the claim of $2,906. An offer was made of $1,148, which was rejected. And uh, the uh, I think the testimony will show that this this turn was being made onto a street that was under construction and there was concern about how far into the intersection the claimant's vehicle might have pulled and able to be, whether it was beyond the crosswalk while the turn was being made by the uh, city vehicle. So we uh, acknowledged that the city vehicle was making a right turn on red, which was not permitted on that intersection, but attempted to uh, uh, apportion liability and uh, uh, that suggestion was denied and this appeal was taken. So the uh, the recommendation of the uh, committee was to have paid a portion of this claim which was rejected by the complainant. Okay, are there any questions for Mr. Scarda? Seeing none, Ms. Levinson, maybe you could first explain why you were next to a tow truck, why you were, why you were in a spot you shouldn't have been as marked by the truck itself that says stay 50 feet back. Okay, um, first of all, there were no blinking lights on the vehicle. Um, where I was going, I was coming down 18th and going two blocks to the right. Um, it was to a theater. And because of construction in the area, I couldn't come from the other way. So the only way to get to the theater was going down 18th, mm -hmm. taking a right on Central Avenue. 
I was traveling along the street. There was a snowstorm and I pulled up to take a right because that was, I pulled up to Central to take a right because that's where I needed to take a right. There was a big city vehicle present. However, there were no blinking lights at all. There was no signal. There was no sign. If there was a sign, it was covered with snow. It was a snowstorm. The other vehicle was up very far to the left as if he was going to either go straight or make a left. I was going to make a right turn and I did not know until I pulled up next to the vehicle that it was no turn on red because I was coming down the street and there was a big giant city vehicle and I knew at the light I had to take a right. And so it wasn't until I got to the right hand turn lane that I saw the sign that said no turn on right. The vehicle to my left was definitely either going left or going straight because there was plenty of room on the right. So once I saw that it was no turn on right, I stopped. I waited at the intersection. I was not pulled up past the crosswalk because as soon as I saw no turn on red, I waited. And it was one of those situations where we waited, we waited, we waited, we waited. There were no other vehicles around. And it was one of those things that was very tempting to just take a right turn because there was nobody around. I was just going a block and a half that way. But I waited and all of a sudden the big vehicle next to me, I didn't even know it was a tow truck. It was just a big giant thing. And all of a sudden that car started moving and I heard crunching of metal and I looked up and the light was still red. So I was confused because it hadn't turned green. It wasn't time to take a right. And also he had been very far to the left. Also, there had been no signal. Also, there had been no flashing lights. But there is, I mean, I have a picture of the car and the truck and it says keep back 50 feet. So I'm just wondering if you saw that or have you ever seen one of these well, I wasn't loud vehicles that say stay back from it. It's big. It's bigger than you. Be careful. I thought I would just take a right and go right by. I don't recall seeing that on the back of the vehicle. Maybe it was covered in snow, but I wasn't parked behind it. I was just taking a right and going on right by to mind my business. If I had just taken a right and made an illegal turn, my car would have been fine. However, I obeyed the traffic laws. He did not obey the traffic law. He also immediately said, as soon as he got out of the car, I'm really sorry, I didn't see you. Which I thought was also funny because I was right there next to him and I was sitting there waiting for the light, looking around. I had a clear view of him. So if he had just looked to the right before legally turning and breaking a traffic law, he would have seen me. Mm -hmm. So didn't look, turned right illegally, and it seemed pretty obvious to me that he got bored of waiting as both of us were and as opposed to even waiting for the light to turn, turned right. So turned right from a left turn area, turned right on a no turn in red, turned right without looking if there was a car next to him. Great, is there anything you wanna add? Um, as to the figure, the 2900, that must have been, somebody did come out to do an inspection of the car, so maybe that was the value. Um, the amount of the damages were 19, one estimate said 1,900 and one estimate said 2,400. I don't know where the 2,900 is. I'm not asking for that much. Um, what I just want is either the value to fix the car or the value that the car would be worth. I actually have over there a giant stack of um, receipts going back to 2008 of all of the money put into the car. That has nothing and the to worth. do with it. Okay. It's strictly about the and value. And strictly the blue book value minimum according to the figures I have are 1800, what was 1809? I'm not sure what the um, person who did the inspection found, um, but the way I see it is I was just waiting to take a right turn. And if this person hadn't, if this person had waited for the light to turn green, my, I would not be out any money. If he had looked to see if there was a car there, I would not be any, out any money. Um, it's probably not worth it, the full $2,400 or $1,900 to fix the car. Um, however, the car was in wonderful shape before that, and should I sell it, I don't want to take a loss because I waited for a light to turn green. Okay. Um, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Is, uh, is, who's here from the public works end of it? Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, I just want to inform you of our process as far as any kind of vehicle crashes in public works. Um, it's very, very formal. So um, you were not the driver? I was not the driver. Can you tell us your name, please, for the record? James Dykes. I'm the safety manager of public works. Okay. Is, was the driver here? Yes, he is. Can you ask him to come up here, please? Absolutely.
Hello. <laughs> Hi. What is your name, sir? Tom Chidio, public Tom. server service worker one. Yep, just cool. Just tell us what happened. Okay. You were there. He was not. Right. Just... I was in a sanding operation. I was heading down. Uh, it'd be eastbound on 18th, coming up to Central, and the light was red. Came to stop, looking both ways and all that stuff, and I did proceed to take a right hand turn on the red but, but I had all my lights flashing my right blinker on and I did not see anybody right to the right side of me and only thing I can think of would have been is in between the two mirrors I got a spot mirror on my front right fender and I got one on the right and being a snowstorm the little white car was just perfect spot but anyway I started to proceed to take my turn and if you look at the pictures actually um, I, yeah, this is this picture here shows that uh, why I was in that drive lane. Oh, oh, two reasons I was in a drive lane because I was laying salt down all the way, all the way down 18th when I was going down it. And actually, the right hand lane is a parking lane. And in order for me to make that right hand turn, if you notice, there's two barricades on 18th Avenue there. And they're both blocking actually the parking lane and the right hand lane. So in order to make that turn, you'd have to make it wide in order to hit that center lane there. And I started to proceed to, to make my right hand turn. And I actually got right up. If you look in the picture, it's right about where the snow, where you would just make the turn there. That's where I felt the contact of hitting something. And I have another picture of actually of where the intersection oh no that goes there if you look at that picture now you see where the crosswalk is i didn't make my turn right hand turn right at that crosswalk i actually drove out a bit to start to try to take my right turn and that's where I made contact with the vehicle and i mean as you can see there was no way that the other vehicle was stopped back at that intersection and we made contact. It was when I made the turn. So if I was making that right hand turn on red, that little white vehicle was doing the same exact thing because that's exactly where we made contact. And it would have been a little bit easier to show this whole information on there, but I could not get the person in that other vehicle to stay at the accident. And I called the police, I called 911, told the uh, claimant that I have an officer coming here and says, we got this, our procedure. It's in the city. We have to have an officer on any accidents. And uh, all she kept telling me is I have to make my audition. I'm late for my audition. I have to go. I have to go. And so I kept telling Is there telling a police report? Yeah. Yeah. So it was after the fact. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, she, she left the scene of the accident. The officer showed up. I tried to explain to him what went on and all that. And then we had to go track her down, pull her out of her audition to try to go what was going on, but if, if my, the way things happened, if we would have been able to stay right there at the accident, it would have been easy enough to say that we were both basically taking that right hand turn on red because there's no way our cars would have made contact back at that intersection if you can see where the crosswalk is. Because I, we both, I, I mean, I stopped way back in the crosswalk and it, it was dead. There was no traffic on the road at all. That's why I started to proceed on the right hand turn on red. Okay, are there any questions for the driver? Okay, Mr. Dykes, do you have something you want to add? No. no. Ms. Levinson, why did you leave the scene of the accident? Um, Could you, you know, come on up here. Okay. You don't have to stand back there. So, two things. First of all, I was not making an illegal right turn on red. I was waiting. I heard the crunch of metal and I went, <gasps> And I looked up and then I looked back down and then I froze because it was scary. I was just sitting and waiting in my car and all of a sudden there was something moving into me. I was not making a right turn on red. Also, if he had his signal on, he must have turned it on when we were sitting there parallel because I would have seen a signal and not proceeded as I did. Also, if it is supposedly a parking lane, I go that route. I went that route every single day after that, but coming from the other way. And it's always cars go in the right-hand lane to turn right, cars go in the other lane to turn to go straight or left. 
as for the leaving the scene of the crime, so as I the explained, accident, not the crime. Yes, <laughs> there's no crime committed here. Accident. Just to put a little levity. It into sounds it. so much more dramatic. No, but um, you weren't so, there. So they. The, so the. I mean. So, so what happened was I, as I explained, I was going a block away, right to the left. And yes, I did have an audition at a time, and I also have a very hyperactive bladder. And so basically, so we pulled over, I was shaken, I was crying, I was scared. I was also at a moment angry because I had this very important thing for my life a block away, and I didn't wanna have to miss it because I was just waiting for a light to turn red. I said, as soon as we got out of the car, I said, he said, I've called a police dispatch, they're on their way, there's a snowstorm going on right now, I have absolutely no how long it, long it could be, it could be a while. And I said, I'm supposed to be somewhere right there. You can see the building from here. Is there any way, can we go there? So while we're waiting, if it's going to be up to two hours, I can be inside, not out in the cold and use the bathroom and not miss my appointment. I said, could we just go right up there? The building is right there. If it's gonna be up to two hours, do we have to stay in the middle of this intersection? He said, no, that's fine. Sure, we can go there. And I said, okay, it's right up here, follow me. I drove the three quarters of a block, made a left, went back out in the street, waved, he came up and I said, okay, I'll be right inside there. Do you wanna come inside? I'll be right here. I had to go to the bathroom. That's where I needed to be. I was a half a block away. He said, sure, it's fine. He said, I'll come and get you when somebody arrives. I said, all right, I'll be right inside the door. I went inside. I told the people who I was there for my appointment with what was happening. I said, my car is right there. There's going to be somebody coming to get me. I went back out again. I said, all right, I'm starting this. I'll be right inside. And he said, okay, we'll come in and get you. And a little bit later, a police officer came in and I was waiting right by the front ready. I just didn't want to wait in the cold when I was still right there. And so yeah, the that makes sense to me, except for that, what by leaving the accident scene, the police officers weren't able to give us a third party opinion of who was well, where. Well, the foreman, but I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I have never been in an accident. I didn't know procedure. I just said, can we go this block away where I'm supposed to be? And he said, sure, that's fine. And I didn't know there was an issue to not, and it made sense to me, we could either wait here in this intersection in the cold for two hours or go the half a block to where I'm going. And the first response was, sure, that's completely fine. The police officer came in, then the foreman came in, then the police officer came in. So on and on, everybody was coming in and speaking to me. I was not hidden, I was very accessible. Everybody knew where I was. If I knew it was going to be a problem, I would definitely not have done that. I would, if I knew I needed to stay there, I, I wouldn't have. I was told, sure, that's fine. And I said, okay, if there's not a problem, if all parties agree, because he said, sure, that's fine. And I, I was even like, well, you could even wait inside too. No point in both of us waiting outside in the cold. Okay. But yes, I did say I have my appointment because that's I didn't okay. have an appointment. We're not, we're not making a judgment about your appointment there's two vastly different stories of who was where, when, yes. and no actual third party evidence to determine that he or you is 100% right. That is the way we see it. That's at least the way I see it. So if he you did had... still admit that he did take a right turn on a no turn on red. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't complete... make him 100% liable. You might have a better chance in court. You might want to consider that, but why don't you let us see where the panel is at? Okay. Should I sit? Please do. Okay, thanks. Are there any questions for anyone else? Or Mr. Scarta, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, nothing further, but I think you see the uh, the dilemma faced by the staff claims committee. Mm -hmm. Council President Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Scarta, what was the amount offered? I, I've got the the release that was attached, and I, it looks to me like the offer was made in the amount of $1,148.65. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I would move that um, we uh, authorize that uh, amount uh, to be paid. Okay. Are there further comments or questions from the panel? Okay. Um, I, I support the recommendation as suggested by the council president. Um, I think it's very hard for us to determine if anyone was 100% at fault. It doesn't seem to me like anyone was 100% at fault. It was kind of half a dozen of one or the other. Um, 
We don't have an independent third party to tell us what exactly happened. I have a truck that has a giant do not come close to me 50 feet sign in a snowstorm while they're sanding. And I have a young lady who sounds perfectly legitimate as well that she was in the wrong place at the wrong time and just simply didn't see it. I don't see it as her evading the police or uh, anything like that. Um, I think uh, the best you're going to get from us anyway is the staff recommendations. I support the council president's motion on the motion to um, authorize an expenditure of up to $1,148.65. Is that the amount, Mr. Skirda? Yes, 1,148.65. All in favor of the council president's motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, council member Reich. Uh, that item is approved. We'll then move on to item number six. Uh, let me see, is George Bowler here? Mr. Bowler, is Mr. Bowler here? Mr. Bowler is not here. I'm going to move to deny his appeal. Oh, yeah. oh. oh you want, I'm sorry. Okay, why don't you come up then? <laughs> we have had an opportunity to read the letter. This is the kidnap Jeep argument. Um, perhaps you can just summarize um, the appellant's point of view. My name is Ellen Velasco Thompson. I'm the risk director for our risk management and claims. And um, <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Chair and um, council members. Uh, on this particular claim, um, there was a police citation from the MPD regarding an abandoned motor vehicle. Um, the claim has been made for $252. Uh, claimant states he was um, not parked in the front of his house due to street construction. He parked at 4032 Pleasant Avenue South, and the vehicle was not moved and was ticketed and towed. The court forgave his ticket, and he is requesting reimbursement for the tow that was um, basically over 72 hours it was parked. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Mr. Scarto, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee know that this is a, he was parked. Uh, not in front of his house because of road construction and uh, it was marked and uh, uh, for having been parked at another location for over 72 hours. Okay. I'll get one more time. I'll note Mr. Bowler was unable to be here but wanted us to move forward via a letter appeal. I'm going to move to deny the appeal. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That item is approved. We'll then move on to the case of Naomi Campbell. Is Ms. Campbell here? Okay, we'll have Mr. Scarda. I'll lay out the case and we'll invite you to come up and speak now. Thank you. Mr. Scarda. Madam Chair, members of the committee, Ms. Campbell is making a claim with a date of loss of October 29, 2014 in the amount of $180 relating to the towing of her vehicle. On October 29, 2014, she had her vehicle parked at 1701 First Avenue South and was issued a citation by a traffic control agent for parking where there were no temporary signs parked. Ms. Campbell appeared before the staff committee and asserted that were, there were no signs posted and that she shouldn't have been towed. The uh, ticketing agent uh, indicated that he observed five signs posted uh, and the, the uh, signs are photographed, which are included in the packet of the signs that were posted when he issued the ticket. Uh, Ms. Campbell continued to say that those signs weren't there and uh, the staff based upon the, uh, the citation indicating that there were five signs as well as the photographs showing that there were signs present taken by the agent uh, recommended denial of this claim. Okay. I, I just want to note also in addition to the evidence of the signs from the moment of the ticketing, a completely separate person not in conjunction with the person who took the pictures, noted the streets posted sign on a completely separate, different bit of evidence where they list where the signs were posted, and that is in an exhibit that we have in front of us. Uh, Ms. Campbell, please come up, explain how the city was negligent. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know how to address y'all, but kind of listening, I did hear Madam, then I heard Ma'am, and I heard Committee, so. Lisa, just, whatever you'd like. <laughs> I just want to be correct. You're correct. But, Thank you all for hearing my case, your uh, committee and your 
uh, Chairman Lady. I am a nurse. I work for the federal government at the VA. I'm very observant. I have to get individual medication. I have to know the cause and effect. So I'm very observant where I go. And then when I go downtown, I've been parking in one position forever. I've been here 30 some years. And when I go downtown, which is very rare, I park there. And even when they started putting those tote, those, uh, pay tickets there, they never put those little signs there to pay. So I know that I parked there. And I'm very observed. There was no signs there. I would never have parked there knowing that my car would get told and I need my transportation for work. I never do that. I would never. I'm just not. I'm more responsible than that. Honestly, those signs were not there. And like I say, that's the only spot that I can go and park and not have to pay. So I, I go there because I know it's there. And you're on if those signs had to be there. I never would have parked there. I need my car for work and other things that I do. I'm very observant. You know, and if they had been there, I would have found other places. Even if I had to pay $2 for parking. It's not that important. My car is more important to me and being a law-abiding law citizen. You know, and if you really look at those pictures, as I did, if you look up under my car, I'm parked from the curb, and it's wet under my car. There's no leaves behind my car. But if you look up at the top picture where they took it way, way away, you see those signs way up in front of my car. And then they over in the bushes. They're not even where you can really visibly see them. But like I said, if you really pay up close to that picture at the bottom, the street was wet. And it hadn't been raining. I said, wow, you know, I just kind of wonder why the street was wet. They're just type person I am. I'm, I'm, I'm very observed. And I have to... I'm just a cause and effect person. If I give something, I got to look for the reaction and why I'm giving this whatever treatment or whatever I am doing for that individual. But I'm just saying, I never would have parked there if I had seen those signs. And if it was five signs, I couldn't have missed them. Well, we have a picture of it. So they can, okay, you think well, they put those signs up after they ticketed you? Of course they do. You know, they do all kinds of stuff. I'm not saying And, that, and then also <laughs> the people that noted when they put what the signs people? up forge that? What people? But you can look at... Totally I'm, different, unrelated person came and posted friends. The, the fall street sweep. They listed every single place they posted them, so they forged that, and then they took a picture and forged I that. don't know, you oh, chair lady. I don't know. I'm, I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I can pay my debt, you know, but that's what I'm here. If I'm wrong, I did. I do that. But I just feel like I'm I'm, I'm not in, in fault this time. I, I just feel that in my heart. I'm not. Okay. Five signs. I would have noticed that. I just would have noticed the five signs. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your all right. Testimony. Thank you all. Um, Mr. Miller, who is reporting on this? I think I've made your case, but go ahead and tell me if I got something wrong here. Madam Chair, Council Members, uh, just I believe you guys have this in your packet, and I would also like to point out that uh, this is the officer log report from the day that uh, the claimant was ticketed and towed. Historically, that block along First Avenue is bumper to bumper traffic uh, every day, any day. And on this day, she was the only vehicle parked on that block, telling me that 29 other vehicles saw the signs and the claimant did not. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Miller? Ms. Uh, Council Member Campbell. I'm uh, Council Member Gordon. I just wanted to clarify, is that the car that got towed in the picture? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Council Member Gordon, that is a ticket, or I'm, I'm sorry, photograph taken by the agent with the handheld ticket writer at the time of the ticket. Okay, I just wanted to verify that. It's pretty hard to argue with something like that from our position. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I think I, we have to, uh, have to move to deny this. At, uh, it's unfortunate, and I know it's expensive. And uh, I don't think that Ms. Campbell parked there thinking there were signs or seeing the signs, but I don't know how we can award the claim if there were signs. Okay. We still think you're a really great person, and thank you for being a nurse in the federal government, and we appreciate your service to the community. Unfortunately, we don't see where the city is negligent in this case. Um, on the motion to approve, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you for coming Thanks, down God. today. You too. Um, Andrew Schmidt, is Mr. Schmidt here? <coughs> the car thing is a letter? Wow. Okay. Mr. Skarda. Madam Chair, I believe this is a letter of appeal by Mr. Andrew Schmidt 
who has a date of loss of May 1st, 2014. He's claiming $3,300, which is the purchase price of a 2002 Toyota Camry. On May 1st, Mr. Schmidt purchased the vehicle from the Minneapolis impound lot auto auction. The sale at the auto auction is uh, uh, as is. He was unable to receive a new key to the vehicle because the master key had been lost and it would cost him approximately $3,000 to have his vehicle retooled or rekeyed, which has meant he's unable to get in the vehicle. He's unable to re receive a title for it. Uh, the staff claims committee uh, recommended that this claim be denied because the vehicles are sold as is. Uh, and uh, uh, that's taken into account in the purchase price. Okay, are there any questions for Mr. Scarda? Uh, does the committee feel you need to hear from Mr. Kennedy? This is a pretty up and down case. We buy, they buy the car as is. Someone here to speak to this? Oh, please. Oh, I thought Mr. Kennedy was here to defend you. He got up. I don't but, know that we need to hear much more unless. Uh, no, it, it's as is. He signed the agreement prior to the auction. So pretty much that's it. And you, you sign it as is. You don't, you take your chance when you buy it at auction. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for staff? Thank you for being here. Seeing none, I'm going to move to deny the appeal. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Our remaining item is the appeal of Ms. Henderson. I, you must be Ms. Henderson. So we'll let Mr. Scarta uh, make his point and then we'll ask you to come up. Madam Chair, members of the committee, this is an appeal by Cradella Henderson with a date of loss of December 16th, 2014. Uh, her vehicle was damaged, but she is claiming the $500 deductible amount. The claimant uh, filed a claim for her vehicle. She says that on December 16th, 2014, she was driving on 23rd Avenue North, approaching Lindale Avenue North. She lost control of her vehicle due to snow and ice on the streets. After losing control of the vehicle, she knocked down a stop sign and hit a fire hydrant. She alleges that... Uh, the basis of her claim is the snow and ice on the streets. The, uh, there had been no prior complaints concerning the maintenance of the street, as well as Minnesota Statute 46603 provides immunity for snow and ice violations on public streets unless the municipality does something to create the hazard, such as leaving a ridge of snow or doing something affirmatively to cause the problem. And there was no evidence in this case that the city had done anything affirmatively. And it was the recommendation of the uh, committee that uh, this claim be denied based on immunities. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. Scarda on this issue? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Henderson, please come up and explain how the city created this hazard and that therefore was negligent. Yes. Uh, as you heard, on uh, December the 15th was a snowstorm. Well, my thing is that uh, it's like if it's, I feel like they was negligent because those are Main Street. Main Street should be first priority. And there was a whole sheet of ice. Because if it was, you know, a store or anything, they're reliable for, they're taking care of, ma maintaining their property. So, it, like I said, you know, out of all my years of living in Minnesota, North Minneapolis streets were the worst. I live over Johnson on the hill. And, you know, whenever there's a snow emergency or storm or something, your main streets, I realize you can't get to every street, but I feel like your main streets where traffic flow down to and from should be a priority. So, and I feel like, you know, if that street had been, you know, taken care of properly, you know, I wouldn't have had no damage. So. Okay. Thank you for your testimony. All Mr. Right. Kennedy, you must be here on this. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Mike Kennedy, I'm the Director of Transportation and Maintenance Repair for Public Works. Um, <clears throat> this is about a snow and ice control claim. Um, there was a, a snowstorm, a, a minor event, it was about an eight inch or 0.8 inch snowstorm that evening. Um, our typical response, as she said, is, is to uh, first plow the main arterial streets, what we call our salt routes. Uh, this isn't a snow emergency situation, but our snow emergency routes are essentially what we call our salt, salt routes, the main priority routes. Our night crew um, 
uh, took that up and they were out working the salt routes all evening from 10, in, 10 at night till six in the morning. <clears throat> and then our day crew took over. Some of those were dispatched doing different things. Uh, most of them got out on on uh, some of the other arterial routes, but some started the residential streets. It takes a while to get through that entire sequence. It takes a whole night just to do the arterial routes and then they get out and do other things. Um, 23rd Avenue is a residential street. It's a non-salt route and uh, so it's a lower priority and it takes a while to get there. Um, so the city was responding as um, we always do with our normal procedures for uh, this type of event. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Seeing none, Ms. Henderson, is there anything you'd like to add? No, thank you. Uh, Council Member Wright. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to now. Uh, motion to deny is in front of us. Um, essentially, the city has immunity in this case. This was not a priority route, but they were getting to all of the priority routes. 0 0.8 inches of snow is not a lot of snow. So I'm sure every brigade in the five state area was not called in uh, for this, but nonetheless, the city uh, is offered immunity in this case and will choose to take it on the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That item is approved. Thank you for being here today. <coughs> um, I will just note that the tort claim summary report is in everyone's packet. Should you want to take a look at it, and should you be wondering why we're still here, uh, we are still working towards the process of sun sunsetting this claims process at the end of the term, is what we're looking towards. Councilmember Gordon. Oh, uh, and, we're, and we're working on it slowly but surely. Uh, and any questions should be directed to Ellen or myself. Uh, if you have any questions on Mr. Strada. Seeing no further business before us, we are adjourned.